Hey now everybody, welcome to Inglet.org. This is Professor Island, and today we are discussing the citation of primary sources. Uh, when you're on Inglet.org, you just choose your class, uh, doesn't matter which one, because you're going to find a discussion called Paper Format and Test Instruction, and when you go to that, you will scroll down, and under Paper Format, you will find a discussion of quoting your sources, primary sources, uh, for the MLA style, of course, not the APA style, in which uh, you will find this. Now, understand the difference between APA and MLA in terms of the in terms of the word primary source. In APA, which is your humanities, hist you know, history classes, sociology classes, psychology classes, if you're doing a report on Sigmund Freud, a primary source is any work written by Sigmund Freud. Um, however, in in literature, we are discussing uh, artworks. If for lack of a better term. In other words, we're discussing poems and plays and stories and short stories and things like that, lyrics. The primary source is the work under discussion. And when we use that term here, what we're talking about is the thing you're analyzing. Uh, and certainly if you are taking English 101 class and you're in my class, you're, you're analyzing short stories and that short story by Edgar Allan Poe or by uh, Bobby Ann Mason or by um, you know anybody along those lines is going to be the primary source. In your 103 class, a poem by Sandra Cisneros or a play by uh, Luis Valdez is, is the primary source and certainly for any of your literature courses, you know that movie by uh, Quentin Tarantino is the primary source and everything else Biographical information, interviews with the author, uh, author commentaries, the commentary uh, while you're watching the movie, all that stuff is all secondary source material. So that being said, let's talk about uh, you know how we're going to quote primary sources. For English 101 especially, this is important because this may be the first time you've been asked, ever been asked to do this, but certainly for any other class, any other literature class that I teach, you are required to directly quote from the resource that you're analyzing in order to demonstrate your uh, analysis of it. And the reason for that is is that uh, whether we're talking about poetry or we're talking about movies or we're talking about short stories or plays, is that this is art and the translation of it is up to the individual in terms of a, a concept that they're going with. And while there will be disagreement as to whether or not a particular uh, literary approach is valid or invalid given the work, Ultimately, it comes down to you showing us where you got the idea that the author of a work was trying to say something or that a character in a work was trying to do something or had a particular thought. Because if you cannot show us where you got that idea in the primary source, then your argument is dead from the get-go. And therefore, you have to show us. If you want to claim that Jackson Jackson uh, is, uh, is trying to uh, get back to uh, becoming his grandmother, show me where that is in the story. Uh, if you feel that... Um, that uh, Leroy in uh, in Shiloh has some kind of internal conflict, show me where that is in the story. And if you cannot show it to me, then it's a bad answer, and you need to try another approach. To that end, when you are going to be uh, using that primary source, you are obviously using direct quotation, which means you're going to be applying uh, the... Uh, the exact words from the author, uh, and they will be word for word. Do not change any words, because if you do, you'd have to make some modifications that I'll show you shortly. It can be a single word, a, a phrase, a sentence, a series of sentences, um, but really what you're looking for is a quotation that is very specific to the point you're making. If you're trying to show me that a character has internal conflict, I need you to show me where the character says or the narrative shows that the character is mulling something over where the character says, you know, I'd like to do this, but at the same time, I don't want to do this so that we can see the internal conflict. Or the character says, you know, I really like you for this and I hate you for this and I don't really know what to do with it. That is going to demonstrate internal conflict. Don't show me, for example, that they went out and got a cup of coffee because that does not demonstrate internal conflict. Uh, when you give me direct quotation, you're going to place a citation directly after the quotation or, or a particular statistic. Uh, this means that if you are going to give me a quotation and then at the end of the quotation you're going to finish with uh, your own words to create a full sentence, I need the citation at the end of the quotation rather than the, at the end of the sentence, and here's why. You do not want to give the impression that the thought, the translation that you gave at the end of that quotation is the author's opinion. Uh, what you're doing is you're quoting the author's ideas uh, and, and then you're citing the author's uh, quotation as the author's and then the rest of it is all you and you do not want to have the uh, author um, in there. 
Uh, in-text citation is now the author's last name, as it has been, and the page number, if there is one, for books like Jones 34, line numbers for lyric poetry, like Prime 3 through 6, or act and scene for plays, Shakespeare, uh, uh, Act 2, Scene 3, uh, in parentheses with no comma, no P, no PG. Um, when you have more than one author, you separate them by commas. Uh, and uh, when you have more than one author with the, uh, more than one author um, in excuse me, more than one work by the same author in your work, like you're gonna do an analysis of Stephen King, and you're gonna talk about his story survivor type, and then you're also gonna have an uh, 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 something from his website. Um, you have two items from Stephen King. Uh, maybe you have something also from Dance Macabre, which is his book on writing. And he's also got a book called On Writing. Um, this is where you would cite by title of the work rather than the author, because if you simply put King, we have three different choices, uh, and, and it's unclear as to which, which it is. Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, quotation is always preceded and followed by your analysis. In other words, do not begin or end quotation uh, a paragraph with quotation. The quotation is evidence and support, and you're always going to give us the lead in to what the quotation is, and then you're going to tell us more about it when you're done. Do not give me a quotation, and then tell me what the quotation is, is making reference to. Instead, set it up, and then use quotation as evidence. Uh, examples of how quote gets used. If the original in the story was, he drove through the night, you would simply put quotation marks around the actual words, give me a citation, and you're good to go. If there's an exclamation point or a question mark, they stay within the quotation marks, but if there is none, if it's just a comma or a period or something like that, that goes at the end here. But if you have an exclamation point or a question mark within the original, they stay within the quotation marks, and then there's still a period at the end of the citation. Um, sometimes you can incorporate, and of course the more sophisticated way is for you to incorporate quotation into your own sentence. So if the original quotation was, she was a modern woman, you could then use the phrase modern woman from your quotation and then fill in the rest with your own words and you would end up with something like this. Uh, same thing would be if this was the original quotation and then you're taking this bit here. By the way, see these three dots? These um, ellipse, basically what these are doing is these are saying, these are editorial marks that say, I took words out of the original quotation, but I did not change the meaning. And so we'll say strong personality, big heart. Well, you're, you're taking out um, uh, you're taking out these bits here and you're taking out um, this bit here from the quotation and that's why those three dots are. And you say, hey man, that's just a single, that's a single word, it's a single letter. Is Does it really make a difference? And yes, it makes a difference. Uh, if you make any changes to the original quotation, when you quote it, you have to identify it and when you take words out, you put the three dots in there, the ellipse to show that that is the case. Um, and again, when, you're, when you are using uh, you're, uh, when you're using quota quotation, a section of that of the quotation, remember you are explaining the context of it. And this quotation here kind of shows how the author not only used the direct quotation from Jones here, but also explained why this person would have been called, in this case, a man's man. Um, in APA, and if you've taken a history class, sociology class, you'll note that APA wants you to cite everything. They want you to cite everything you ever got from every author. And whether or not that is useful or helpful, yeah, that's up to the APA folks to decide. In MLA, it's a bit different. Because we are looking at the way words are used as part of our analysis, we are really looking for quotation. And so you're only going to cite direct quotation unless the paraphrase is either a sp specific statistic or it is the author's opinion about something. So for example, uh, statistics obviously refer to specific information, usually numbers, percentages, that explain something. And what you're, the reason you're citing that is because one, one um, survey in 1975 might have found out that uh, you know 65% of the people thought that uh, ending the Vietnam War was a good idea, and a different survey found that 75% of the, of, the, of the people thought it was a good idea. And what you're doing is you're citing a specific statistic and giving me the author, so that way, when I look it up, I know that that is what that particular researcher found as opposed to a different researcher who might have done something at the same time and come up with different um, information. You're not quoting, you're not, you're not saying 75% and putting in quotation marks and then citing it. You're just reporting the 75% of the population did such and such, and then you're citing Jones because I need to know where you got that number because it's an actual number. Like statistics claims 
are, uh, are particularly important in terms of citation, and that's because a claim is an actual opinion stated by an author. When you're reading an analysis of, say, Ernest Hemingway or of, um, of Emily Dickinson, they may make a claim as to the importance of that author. They may say Emily Dickinson is the most important author, female author in American history. Well, that's that critic's opinion analysis. Somebody else may say, no, man, it's Sylvia Plath or somebody else along those lines. This is where you need to cite that paraphrase because you're, you're actually saying this guy or this woman, this critic said this. This is their opinion, not mine. You cannot state it as, as fact and just let it lay there. At the same time, you don't have to use quotation for that, although I always encourage it, but you are giving their opinion. When people are giving statistical information that is not numerically derived and is not questionable, such as birth date, death dates, uh, number of records sold in a year, uh, whether or not they hit the top 10, whether or not they won an Emmy, that stuff is not citable because it's easily found. Do not cite easily found, easily verifiable statistical and, and factual information. We don't need that. Save that for your MLA class. Um, obviously, you have um, this. If, if you if you found this in the Jones article, Edgar Allan Poe believed to be one of the greatest writers ever. Uh, Jones claims that Poe is one of the best writers in history. You're rephrasing what they said. Notice you're not using their words word for word, and then you would cite it. If you actually want to say greatest writers ever, you'd put in quotation marks and give me the citation that way. Um, Keep in mind that ultimately, as you as you go through this page here, I'll give you various things how to quote plays, how to quote the Bible. By the way, chapter and verse, and you always, the first citation for a Bible, give me the name of the Bible, because different Bibles have different, frankly, they have different ways of saying stuff, and uh, that's just how that goes. So anyway, um, uh, and then of course I need the, I need the chapter and verse. Uh, and then, um, and, and so, like I said, some various things like plays, Bibles, things like that, they get their own type of citation. Uh, if you cannot find a page number for any work, just give me the author's name. Uh, they used to have you do line numbers, paragraph numbers, but MLA said, uh, this is becoming too worky. When you find something online, it's very likely that you're not going to find any page numbers. So you just give me Jones, whatever, and I'll do a word search and I'll find it. Quote within a quote. <clears throat> the deal is, is with stories, we very often have dialogue. Dialogue in a story is indicated because the author puts quotation marks around that, around those words. Uh, for example, in a first-person narrative, like uh, What You Pawn I Will Redeem, or um, something like The Cask of Amontillado, uh, the story is told by a character. And then sometimes the character will be speaking to a different character, and sometimes that means that character's words are in quotation marks, and sometimes that character's words are not in quotation marks. When the character's words are not in quotation marks, that is narrative, and that is quoted the same way that I've already shown you. You take the author's words, you stick them on the, on the page, put quotation marks around them, citation, boom, you're good to go. However, when there is quotation, either because the narrator is speaking to somebody else or the uh, a different character is speaking to somebody else. It doesn't matter. If you see quotation marks when you're reading it, uh, you need to indicate those quotation marks are different from your own quotation marks. And the way that you do that is you change the quotation marks to apostrophes. So if this is the original quotation, look at that in quotation marks. You change the quotation marks to apostrophes and then you put quotation marks around the whole thing, and then you give me the citation. So if your quotation was, open quotes, I need a drink, close quotes, she said quietly, you then change the quotation marks around, I need a drink to apostrophes, there's apostrophe here, apostrophe here, and then you put quotation marks around the whole thing, and that's what it looks like, all right? Um, and this is, this is important. We need to know whether or not a character is saying something or the narrator is saying something, especially in third-person in third person, uh, narratives. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's talk about long quotation. Uh, a long quotation is four or more lines of text, regardless of the sentence number. And so if it takes four lines of your paper, not in the book, not in the story, but in four lines on your paper, you, put, you plunk the quotation in there and like, oh, okay, this is, this is four or more lines. You're going to not add any quotation marks. You're not going to change any of the original quotation marks. You're just going to stick it in block form, indented five spaces on the left-hand margin. We used to say on each margin, but since we're not using typewriters anymore, good luck getting that Microsoft Word to chop off that sentence uh, five spaces before the end of that uh, right-hand margin. But anyway, indented five spaces on the left-hand margin, uh, and, then, um, and then you cite it after the terminal punctuation. So this would be your, your paragraph. This entire thing would be your paragraph. And this is the long quote in the middle of it. And, and basically what this tells us was is that this is what the book originally said from here to here. 
It originally had this narrative part here. It had this dialogue right here. It had this dialogue right here. It had this narrative here. And you are simply putting a period right where the period was. You're leaving it where it was. And you're giving me the citation. And then you take your words all the way out to the original margin. And then you finish your paragraph. Again, long quote as, as well as any kind of quotation, but especially do not begin or end a paragraph with long quotation because you say, oh, this says it all. Don't do any of that. I need you to say it in your own words and, and, uh, and, and, and begin and end all the paragraphs with your own words. But this also brings me to another issue about long quotation. Long quotation should be used absolutely rarely. Uh, I don't need a very long conversation between two characters for you to demonstrate that one of those characters doesn't like the other character. Find the phrase or the sentence in which the one character says, I hate you. I don't need the back and forth, back and forth between them that runs on for, for a half a page. Anybody who gives me a paper that has a long, long quotation sends up a red flag because that tells me you're padding your paper in order to get to that five or seven or nine or 12 page uh, minimum limit. And I'm going to look at it. Your overall quotation use should be about 17 on the low side to about 24 on the high side percent of your paper, which means at least 75% of the time, the words on the page are yours, and it's your analysis. You're Again, you're using quotation for support of what you're saying. You are not simply just plunking quotations on there saying, well, you can figure it out. You're, you're the guy with the degree. Yeah, that's true, but the idea is you're showing me that you understand what you're doing. Um, there's some other stuff to remember. Citation of more than one work it will be by the title. Citation must include uh, um, uh, the, uh, the title in its original form. Ignore anything about underlining titles. We don't do that anymore. And by the time you see this, this will be changed. Um, obviously, the terminal punctuation of a standard quotation goes at the end of the citation rather than within the quotation marks, unless it's a question mark or uh, an exclamation point. And there is always uh, that, that uh, period after the citation, unless, of course, it's a long, it's a long quote. Uh, text is used for support. It's not meant to be self-explanatory. Uh, and, of course, um, when you get into secondary source material, it's the same formatting that you see here. It's just when we talk about secondary sources, we're talking about different material other than the story itself or the poem itself or the play itself, but that's how that works. Anyway, that's primary sources stuff. Um, of course, I will update this yet again when MLA changes things, but for now, this is the way it works with MLA 8. Uh, use this stuff. If you, if you go to the library, by the way, they also have a tutorial on the same stuff. They'll remind you of the same things I just told you. Utilize this. It's part of your grade. Uh, one of the things you're learning, especially in an English class, is how to cite with MLA, which is different from APA. So, you know, don't fight it. Just uh, drink the Kool-Aid and go along with it and, and everything will be fine. So, anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me uh, an email to uh, englitguy at earthling.net and otherwise, I will see you in class or on the web. Stay in touch.